In this video we're going to talk a little bit about the VE table and how to get data into that from ECM Link and how to uh, view that data. So if we come over here to the VE table tab, first thing we want to do is get our VE table from ECM Link and we do that by going to the um, speed density tab under the ECU, ECU config log right there. You click that, go to speed density and there's your VE table. So I hit copy table and go back to link tools, right click anywhere in this area and hit paste table from clipboard and there's our VE table. Now some of the things we can view and do with this table, uh, first of all up the top there's your buttons like we have on all the pages, do different things. I can uh, load a default, clear this table, erase it. I also have surface plot on the V table, AFR table, and timing table pages. I can look at all this data as a surface plot. If I do that, click surface plot, you can see a nice 3D chart there. Uh, if I unlock it over here and right click, I can actually go in and rotate that and move it around and, and control it with all of Excel's different charting tools. Um, it's locked on uh, by default so that you don't accidentally do things with it to screw the chart up. Uh, but you can unlock it, move it around, change the view of it and all that if you'd like. Uh, a couple other things I can do over here. At the top there's a combo box. This lets me view different things. I've got uh, a V table 1, V table 2, log distribution, correction factors, and table comparison. Uh, Link Tools has two table views here, or two actual V tables. Uh, the reason for that is you might want to work with one table, make a lot of changes to it, compare it to um, the original table, or you might just want to bring tables in from two different logs, do comparisons, things like that. Normally you'll, you'll just be using table one, but if you want you can bring in uh, another table into table two and then do things uh, independently on two V tables at once. Uh, to move around in the table you can simply click, you can use the arrow keys. Uh, if you hold control down and hit the arrow keys you can change values just like you do in ECM link uh, if you've changed a value you'll see that it'll go bold and then uh, if you go back to where it was originally it'll go back to the normal font uh, a couple other things you can do here if you right click you can say store current values and then if you make changes to an area and you decide you don't like those changes hit restore save values and it'll take you back to the table that you stored. So that lets you set a, a restore point at any time you're working on the table. Uh, another thing you can do rather than just storing it temporarily you can save it to VE table 2 and then make your changes or whatever and now you actually have uh, the changed version here and then if I go to VE table 2 you'll see the original version so in VE table 2 I might want to make a lot of really weird changes over here for some reason and then I can go back to VE table 1 and I'm still, I'm still working on it. Now since I stored this originally before these changes I can hit restore save values to VE table 1, VE table 2 is not going to be affected. Now if I hit restore values here obviously it's going to copy the, that same set of save values to this table as well so now they're both back to the same. Uh, one other thing we can look at here speaking of two tables is let's say I've changed an area of a table uh, We'll just grab some cells here and make a change to them. And let's say I want to compare this table to table 2. Uh, I can come down here and hit table comparison and what it's going to do is show me the cells that have changed between the two tables. In this case you can see that anything red and orange means that um, table 1 has a higher value. Obviously I've made these all 100 so uh, that would do it. <laughs> They're going to be higher than table table 2 was. If I'd have gone lower it would be in a blue color. So this gives you a way at a quick glance to see what's different between tables. Uh, if nothing's changed then it'll look like it does out here. And again I can look at that with a surface plot and get a real quick uh, quick indication vis uh, graphically in a 3D view of what's different between the two tables. So that's kind of handy if you want to compare tables to see what's changed. Uh, another thing we can look at is log distribution. What this does is tells me that in any given log where were most of my VE points um, being um, concentrated. So in this log that I've got loaded right here just so happens I've loaded the same VE table that matches this log. So if I look at my log distribution I can see that most of the time was spent up in this area 
and then and going through spool down here um, you'll find out that on most all logs like this pools especially you spend time up in here at idle and, and cruising as you lightly accelerate uh, part throttle it'll move across this way and if you uh, go full throttle then it's going to drop down to the right like this as you're spooling level out at full boost and then when you let off it's going to rotate back up this way um, up to low loads and lowering RPM so your operation during a pull actually makes a circle and you'll end up with areas out here in the V table that aren't being used uh, most likely you'll also have areas out here obviously above your red line that aren't hit and then areas down here above your max boost and then over here areas at high R or low RPMs at high loads that you're not going to hit unless you're towing a trailer or going up a really steep hill or something like that. But anyway, the log distribution just gives you a nice uh, way to look at that visually to see where you're actually at in the log. Uh, again, you can go to a surface plot and get a three-dimensional uh, view of that. Another thing you can look at are correction factors. And when we start getting into actually correcting for AFR errors in our log right here, uh, this will be kind of handy because you can look at the actual percentages in every cell that's going to be applied to the VE table. So if I was to go back to this VE table here and restore my default. So this is the table I brought directly in from ECM link. Let's say that I've decided these are the corrections that I need to make to that table. Now I can just come out here and right click and say apply corrections and it will change all these cells by the correction factor I've told it to. Um, it highlights them, tells me what I've changed. In this case, it's made them red to tell me that I've increased the VE in these corrected cells. So we'll get into the correction factors and all that considerably in other videos when we start talking about how to actually come up with those um, corrections and, and so forth. So that's basically it in, a, in, in general as far as how to look at the different tables. Uh, there's a few other little things you can do. Like, let's say that I've selected this area of the log and I've come up here and used Excel's tools to actually change the pattern for some reason or I want to just do a temporary change on the uh, background or anything you want to do the cells. If I right click and say uh, reset table formatting it'll just erase all that and go back to the default fonts and, and line colors. Um, one other really handy thing you can do if I go back to the log chart over here remember we marked a certain area of the of the uh, of the log um, using the markers and I said you can do a lot of different things with that. Let's say that I want to look at my spool and find out where this area of the log falls in the VE table. Uh, one thing I could do, one way I could do is I can say show spool markers and it's going to show me the markers that e that Link Tools uh, automatically set for me when it imported this log and, just, and calculated where my uh, where my my spool was so here you can see it, it found maximum spool at 28.2 psi right here where it levels off and it started right down here at 1.7 which is right where I hit uh, full throttle so if I wanted to look at just this area in the V table I can do that really easily since it knows where the spool is I can click this little button down here that says uh, mark spool area and if I do that you'll notice it moved my markers the green and red to the spool area now if I right click and say highlight mark cells and then go look at my VE table, it's highlighted all the cells that I hit during spool. So I can get a really quick easy look right there just by setting markers as to which areas of, of the V table were involved while I was spooling up the turbo right there. Uh, in this case, this is a good place for that reset table formatting. It'll, change, it'll get rid of those marked areas. I'll come back over here and if I want to look at let's say 70 to 90 times, I can do the same thing. I can say mark 70 to 90 times. It moves my markers over to those two points. Right click and say highlight mark cells and then look at the V table. And you can see down here are the cells I was in while I was between 70 and 90 miles an hour. So several ways you can mark data and um, do things in, in the VE table uh, based on the log itself. There's one or two more things we can do here. Um, apply scaling. If I've got scale parameters set, for example, uh, if I go to preferences, scale, uh, scaling parameters, there's a lot of different ways I can scale data. We'll get into these a little bit later, but most of the time you'll just want to do a smooth linear ramp or, or just a linear ramp is the simplest. A linear ramp is similar to what ECM link does when you scale. Uh, I can pick any place I want a starting and ending cell, like let's say if I want a nice smooth ramp from 37 to 88 down here. If I right click and hit apply scaling, 
it'll make a nice smooth smooth ramp there uh, say I want to go across this way I can do the same thing so apply scaling just takes whatever you've got set in your preferences and applies that to the selected cells in the table uh, another thing you can do is adjust for global fuel change so let's say that um, I've made a change in my global fuel the original value was minus 50 and now I've changed it to minus uh, 52 let's say I discovered that I wasn't using the proper value for global fuel I make the change here and say do it it'll actually go through and scale this entire table um, individual cells will be scaled properly so that the new global will um, work with these VE values so anyway, a lot of different things you can do with the VE table itself. And in the, the next video, we'll start getting into um, some of the correction factors you can do and, and so forth with the log chart.